So today I got something special. Uh, big shout out to Goose Holden and the Hitchcock family for getting me a GoPro for Christmas. Uh, really appreciate it. It's been long overdue, believe me. Now I can start making some really good videos for y'all. Um, I wasn't sure if I was going to do a video on this, but I think this is really actually going to help not only people in the Fiero community, ah, can't even speak today, not only people in the Fiero community, but I think it's really going to help uh, anyone with uh, 2.8s, 3.1s, 3.4s, anyone that has this ignition coil set up on their vehicle, because I know S10s, I know a lot of Chevy vehicles have this for like years between uh, 80 to the 90s before they went to coil packs. Um, I was having issues with my ICM and it kept going out. I replaced it with a parts store ICM. Uh, I wanna say it was like a Master Pro. Went out, I decided to go on eBay, get a legit AC Delco one because that's what people told me. And uh, sure enough, same thing. The car stalled, I had no spark and it was very frustrating uh just to let you guys know i'm using arctic silver thermal paste on my icm coils just so uh to roll that out i'm not using the electric grease just in case any of you guys want to complain so i found the problem and it is actually with this ignition coil and this is the reason why my icm has been burning up so i'm going to show you guys how you can test this thing and know if yours is bad or good so let's go ahead and do this. I'm gonna grab some wiring. Okay. So, in this video, I'm gonna got my multimeter. This is a cheap Harbor Freight one. Works great. Um, so, does not cost a lot of money. What you're gonna do is you're gonna put it on the 200,000 ohm setting. Let's see if I can get this for you guys. And we're going to test the primary first. So, here's my meter. Let me get some wire. Uh, to show you guys this, I don't have a paper clip, but wire actually works really good. Alright. So, to know if it's good or bad, what you want to do is zoom in on this for you guys. This one right here, top one, this will get grounded. So it's just going to be one on the wire, just like so. And then your black lead's going to go to ground. So when you test this, it should be, within continuity, it should be infinite. It should not be a closed circuit. It should be open. So ground it. Get my meter. Play my meter for you guys. That way, uh... yeah, that might work really good. So, as you can see, I take the black lead. There's a metal base on your coil pack, so just just ground it to the metal base. As you see, we have infinite. So that means it's a. Uh, um, I can't speak today. Basically, this is good. That means that the the one. Displaying the one, it's, why can't I speak? <laughs> it's infinite, but you, you get what I'm saying. As long as that displays a one on this, uh, where this wire is, you're good. Next up, we're gonna test the second, and it's just right across. So instead of this one right here, it's not gonna be this one over here. This guy, when you test it, same thing, it's gonna be on the high setting, 200,000 ohms. You're going to put one of your leads to the wire, but to test it, it's going to go to the top. And when you guys do this reading, it should be anywhere from 08 to 09. As you can see, this coil is saying 04. That is not good. This right here will actually burn up your secondary and uh, cause distributor problems. Like I said, it's causing me to burn up my ICM. So, so you know, this number's not good. It needs to be higher than this. So, I rolled that out. Now you know uh, what a bad one's gonna look like. 
Next up, grab two wires. We're gonna test these guys. The, uh, I don't know what you'd call it, but the ones closest to the housing. But the way to test this is you're gonna have to jump both these ports. So I'm gonna use two wires. See if I can do this for you guys. Right, this guy's gonna go in there. And then the next one. Hope you all had a great Christmas. Uh, honestly, my Christmas was really good. Um, so now you just take both your leads and you actually want to take your meter and go down to the 200 ohm setting, very low reading. And this guy, when you go to test him, should be anywhere, oh, hold on. All right, so as you can see, I'm at 0 0.04. Anywhere from one, zero to one is good. Um, when I first did this test, the coil was actually reading 0 0.5.3, and that was really high for what this was. Um, crazy that the coil corrected itself, but me doing the test first, this shows on how, uh, how faulty this is. So it's funny on how it's low now, but earlier it was actually reading 05.3, so let you guys know. So, might take you guys to do a couple tests. Um, if you want, double check your work, take your measurements, and roll out your coil. But that that's how this test is done. So, hopefully you guys learned something. Um, I say I'm a lot. <laughs> Hopefully you guys learned something and uh, more videos to come. Uh, I got to do a valve lash on my dad's Fiero. It's been long overdue and I'm not sure if I want to make a video on doing it because it's really time consuming. But uh, let me guys know. Just uh, let, let me know if uh, you guys want me to make a video on valve lash. If not, I'll show you what working on my car. <laughs> uh. So, as you can see, got some oil catch cans set up, got my turbo. Uh, my next video that I was going to show, I haven't got the parts yet, but this is my Gretti Bluff valve. And uh, as you can see, the diaphragm is totally shot. We were making boost only like one to two pounds after, when we first did boost, we hit four pounds. And yeah, this, ever since then, it's just been compressor surge and trying to roll it out uh i found it took this guy apart diaphragms all destroyed i heard good things about ngr so i got one of their diaphragms on the way they're back in stock they're a company out of florida so just give you guys a heads up if you guys don't want to pay for the gretty diaphragm um i'm going to be doing the ngr another thing i got this guy from a local shop and I was actually gonna build my own, but they, uh, this was just too, uh, too awesome. You know, they already had it set up with a gauge. They got this, so I might do a video on boost leaks for you guys. I was gonna try a smoke, but uh, after watching a lot of reviews, smoke works really great for naturally aspirated vehicles. Um, the problem is with a boosted car is you wanna simulate your car under boost so that you know where the leak problem is. And that's what this gauge is for. When you feed compressed air into this, this gauge will go up to where your desired boost level is. Um, I went to eight pounds because that's all I got my car set up for. But I found it. The blow off valve was leaking really bad. <laughs> I decided to buy this because they were a local business. And not only that, they just do this for, uh, you know, like racing applications, help. <laughs> I actually got the paperwork right here and I was actually really cool when they when I saw this <laughs> yeah that's instructions but let's see here dang it sorry guy I'm trying to use one hand <laughs> there we go all right so when I saw the paperwork I was like that's actually really cool says thank you for supporting american small businesses 
I am all for supporting small businesses. Really hope you're satisfied with your Boost Leak tester purchase and always willing to support with products or technical information and will work with you on any issues with your order. See, that's cool. I don't get that a lot. Like from like big manufacturers, we all get screwed and you know it. Even if it had lifetime warranty, to deal with the headaches of sending it back, you know, it's just, I don't like dealing with headaches. And I like definitely dealing with awesome customer service. So these guys are cool. They're legit. Um, they have an eBay store, so you can check it out. But Testing out my new GoPro today. So this is really cool. Uh, first time I've actually ever owned a legit one. Yeah. Don't worry, guys. More videos to come with my Fiero. Converted it to stick shift and threw a turbo in it. So, can't wait to actually uh, show you guys what I got. This is a stock 2.8, so don't be fooled. Uh, the only mods done are pretty much 19 pound injectors, a Holly adjustable fuel. Um, the injectors were flow tested, just to give you an idea that, yeah, you definitely want your stuff flow tested. I don't think you want to run chance of lean out. Um, Ryan Gick from Sinister Performance is helping me with the base map and the tuning aspect. So big shout out to Darth and them over at Sinister. This is actually really cool. I've never I've never done anything like this. And uh, to be walked through without headaches and stuff, and all I gotta do is data log, send him the info to have a new chip burned. It's it's been awesome. So all right, I think I'm gonna end the video here, guys. Let me know if uh, you want another video of uh, doing the valve lash on a Fiero, or uh, I'll definitely be rebuilding the Gretty, so I'll make a video on that. That's that's nothing, so. Thank you. Uh, more videos to come. <laughs>